Здравствуй, сталкер. Добро пожаловать в зону. Welcome to another episode of my Bamboo Gaming series. This time we're going to discuss the universe of Metro 2033, which spans a series of books and video games. But before we get to any of that, I think it's only right that we spend a few moments talking about Arkady and Boris, uh, the Strugatsky brothers, Russian authors of the 1972 sci-fi novel Picnic na Bochni, known as uh, Roadside Picnic in English. This short yet awesome tale inspired plenty of Eastern European fiction in the many years to come. An excellent 1979 Soviet film adaptation of it by Andrei Tarkovsky, called Stalker, is by many considered to be one of the greatest movies of all time. Similarly fantastic, yet much less famous, is the 1984 Polish production by Piotr Szulkin named Obi Oba Koniec Civilizacji, which translates to End of Civilization. Metro 2033 and similar post-apocalyptic franchises owe much of their quality to the fruits of these pioneering minds of decades past. The Russian journalist Dmitry Gulhovsky started writing his first novel at the age of 18, but it wasn't finished until 2002 when he published it online to read for free on his website. By 2005, Metro 2033 was finally printed as a proper book. Although the author claims to have been inspired by the Fallout game series, among other works, his vision of a post-apocalyptic future is noticeably colder and more brutal than stuff like Mad Max. There's less humor and more harrowing experiences, plus we are of course taken to the Russian Federation's capital, Moscow, or other what remains of it after a nuclear war, where the population hid in the city's subway as their only refuge against atomic Armageddon. This is the story of young Artyom, who must leave his meager home behind if he is to save his species from extinction. In 2009, Wolhovsky wrote another book set in the same world, but starring a different cast of characters. That novel was called Metro 2034, a story vastly different to its precursor. Also at the end of the same year, so when the Vsilina Metro 2033 series, or Universe of Metro 2033 in English, began. An international project initiated by Gulhovsky with the idea of allowing authors from around the globe to write their own stories set in his world, featuring their own hometowns and bringing their unique flavor to the chilling wasteland. The series really took off in Russia, where to date well over 90 books have been published under this label. Even though the works of Belarusian, Polish, Ukrainian, British and Italian writers have graced the universe of Metro 2033, the only country where the project has become popular outside of Russia is Poland. Apart from that, Hungary and Germany enjoy a cult following of readers too. At least five other territories have received translations of some novels from the series, but Russia and Poland remain as the core regions for the universe of Metro 2033. In fact, as many as eight books were written in Polish and have entered the series canon, some of them have already been translated to Russian, and there are more to come. Gulhovsky's original trilogy was eventually completed, with the release of its uh, final entry, called Metro 2035, arriving in 2015. This one feels distinctly unlike its sisters, and it really does change things around in the Moscow Metro quite a bit. The universe of Metro 2033 is now a huge collection of novels and short stories, featuring diverse locations such as Vladivostok in the Far East and London in Western Europe, from Rome in the South to Stockholm in the North, and so on. Nevertheless, it remains a mostly Eastern European phenomenon, with the majority of the books taking place either in Russia or Poland. A fair few stories take the reader to Ukraine as well. Meanwhile, a few years earlier in the gaming world, in 2001, the Ukrainian Kiev-based studio GSC Game World announced an atmospheric first-person shooter with survival horror and role-playing elements called Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Initially set for a 2003 release, it is said to take us to an alternate reality where the Chernobyl nuclear power plant suffered from a second explosion resulting in the expansion of the ominous zone and the creation of strange phenomena ripped straight from the works of Tarkovsky and the Strugatsky brothers. However, the game ended up going through a very troubled development cycle with numerous delays, finally seeing its launch in 2007. Despite its numerous issues, it proved to be a mighty fine product that has since gathered a cult following and spawned two other titles. But just two years before Stalker's release, 
a team of developers left GSC Gameworld to form their own studio, also in Kyiv, which would become 4A Games. 4A collaborated with Gluchowski to create something that is quite rare, namely a video game adaptation of a book. The work in question was of course Gluchowski's Metro 2033, and so, in 2010, 4A's first game was released. It featured arguably the most technologically advanced graphics of its time, and I don't say that lightly considering God of War 3 also came out back then. 2010 was a good year for gaming in general, with stellar stuff like Bioware's Space Opera sequel Mass Effect 2 and Rockstar's return to the American frontier in Red Dead Redemption to name just a couple. But Metro 2033 stuck out as an outstanding outlier. An amazing game from a poorer region, it was developed using only a fraction of the budgets of similarly sized western or Asian productions, with less manpower and fewer resources. It wasn't just the visuals that were Metro 2033's best quality either. Although fairly linear in terms of exploration, Foray's first product was an engrossingly atmospheric mixture of FPS gameplay and survival horror mechanics. It traded Stalker's open world for a tighter narrative with more relatable characters. The player was free to choose between a guns blazing or stealthy approach to each encounter with hostile humans, whereas friendly or neutral metro stations give you the opportunity to explore this finely crafted and miserable underground world as you could interact with its poor survivors. Deadly mutated wildlife roamed the icy surface of the earth, which could only be traversed with a gas mask worn on the face. All the while the world economy has been reduced to a brutally simple system, whereby rounds of pre-war military grade ammunition are the only viable currency. The game could also be experienced on an extreme difficulty level, where the heads up display is disabled, and enemies deal as much damage as the player leading to more intense and ultimately more rewarding gameplay. 4A Games' Metro 2033 was a success. Although it failed to reach mass popularity, it sold well enough to warrant a sequel, this time with a larger budget and even more advanced technology. Three years pass and Metro Last Light arrives on store shelves. Originally planned with a multiplayer element, this was scrapped so that developers could focus on the main single-player component of the game. In addition to this, Last Light saw an even closer collaboration between the Russian author and Ukrainian studio, as it is said that Gluchowski wrote most of the story for this one. Overall, it sold even better and scored higher among critics than its predecessor. It also further distanced itself visually from GSC Gameworld's Stalker series. Last Light looked different to its first installment too, as by now the snows have begun to melt and a nuclear spring is on the horizon which was actually due to the fact that the developers simply grew tired of making more overly depressing looking environments. Metro Last Light capitalized on the first game's strong points, adding neat little touches such as having to wipe your gas mask's visor in wet conditions on the surface. 4A put more detail on the human characters, making them look more unique this time and less like members of one big family. The open environments grew larger, allowing the player more freedom to explore than before. The weapon system was revamped to include attachments like suppressors or scopes, among other modifications to firearms. The arsenal in general was expanded with some more explosive additions as well. A mixture of shooting and sneaking was kept, along with the implementation of non-lethal takedowns, but to the dismay of Metro 2033's more hardcore fans, Last Light was undoubtedly a more action-packed experience, with a lesser emphasis on the quieter moments. It was less unforgiving and more accessible too. However, the player is still given plenty of opportunities to catch a breather and the game's friendly locations have been made even more interactive and atmospheric for this one. Over the course of 2013, a short series of gameplay and story-focused DLC was released for Metro Last Light to further flesh out an already generous offering. In the following year, 4A Games published Redux versions of both titles. While Last Light's Redux variant was simply a bundle of the campaign and several downloadable content packs with perhaps a small update to its stunning graphics that wasn't really necessary in the first place, it was actually Metro 2033 Redux that was the scene stealer. We worked completely to make its visuals and gameplay on par with the sequel. The Redux version of the game also received some entirely new areas for the single player, as well as a few other snippets of extra content. It was a good idea in the end and a perfect way of introducing newcomers to the series, all at a decent price. The 
So where is this depressing post-apocalyptic franchise heading next? Artyom's story seems to be concluded with Metro 2035, but the games follow a slightly altered canon of events anyway. 4 games are currently busy with Arctica 1, uh, their Oculus exclusive VR experience, yet it has been said numerous times that it is not the only cake they are baking in the oven. There were some rumors of another Metro game being released in 2017. However, Deep Silver, the publisher of the series, were quick to dismiss these and clear up any mis misunderstandings by pointing out that a 2017 release is not in the plans for any Metro projects they may be working on. Still, Kulhovsky's official website for the franchise lists an untitled Metro project as something we will see in the future. I think it is possible that 4A might want to continue Artyom's tale, maybe in a truly open world title this time. After all, some of their team have experience with this from working on Stalker, and they were clearly interested in the idea of the Kshatriya mission from the Faction Pack DLC for Last Light is anything to go by. But perhaps it's time to give Artyom, Anna, Miller, the other rangers arrest and finally move on to another location with new characters. The universe of Metro 2033 is an enormous pool of ideas to draw from. How fascinating would it be to see a Metro game set in St. Petersburg? Or perhaps 4A might take us to their homeland, where the action could take place in Kiev's Metro system. At the moment, we can only speculate what is to come next, if anything at all. For now, Metro Redux Bundle remains as the best place to get your fix of Eastern European post-apocalypse. Ну да, удачи, Stalker. До встречи. Before I go, I just want to give a very special thank you to uh, the Metro Last Light Forum and all the people there, which is an amazing community uh, for fans of the Metro series. Uh, and also people at the uh, Metro Wiki, which is the best source of uh, English source of information for the Metro series. Uh, finally, please stay tuned to my channel for uh, an upcoming video, which I might be doing quite soon actually, which will, uh, if we're gonna do it, it's gonna be a video collaboration with a Russian friend of mine where we will discuss the Metro series in a bit more detail, it's gonna be probably a bit more analytical than this one, uh, just a little bit of a conversation, yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching, and see you next time.